Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. Thank you for stopping by. This story is written for intermediate English learners. Ready? Let's get started. B1, B2 English Story Visiting Friends Cynthia had just moved with her boyfriend Tom. They had decided to take the plunge and make the move from London to their hometown. They had lived in London for many years but felt that now was the right time to be nearer to their parents and childhood friends. They knew they would miss the city but they were ready to enjoy a slower pace of life. London can be intense, busy, noisy and dirty at times and Cynthia and Tom wanted to live closer to the sea and the countryside. They bought a detached house a short walk from the beach. Tom had grown up just streets away from the house and so he knew the area well. Cynthia wasn't as familiar with the area as she grew up 20 miles down the road. Each lunchtime, between meetings, Cynthia would go for a walk or a run around the area to find her way. She discovered bakeries, shops and little breweries hidden down back alleys and side streets. She loved to walk along the seafront. It blew the cobwebs off and made her feel refreshed and calmer. She closed her eyes and listened to the waves crash on the shore. The sound of the seagulls floating in the air always reminded her of family holidays when she was a child. Even though seagulls could be a nightmare at times, they made her smile. The only problem with their move was that Tom still had to work in London quite regularly, whereas Cynthia could work from home. This meant she sometimes felt isolated and Tom was exhausted from travelling back and forth to London so much. It also meant they were often apart for days on end, so Cynthia became lonely. She invited one of her oldest friends, Sarah, to visit her. Luckily, Sarah also works from home and so she made the trip to see her friends and decided to stay for a long weekend. She arrived on Thursday evening and they went straight out to walk along the pier and have a drink overlooking the beach. Cynthia suddenly felt so much happier. She really missed Tom more than she thought she would and felt so lucky to have a friend who would take the time to come and keep her company. The next day they both worked from home but first they did some yoga. What a wonderful way to start the day! Then at lunch they ate healthy food and went for a walk around the block. As they both logged off their laptops at 5pm, they went to the kitchen and made a home-cooked meal for two. Afterwards, they watched a film and enjoyed a glass of wine. It was heaven! Cynthia wished that every day could be the same, but she knew she had to start to create her own plans and routines. On Saturday morning, Tom arrived back from London and the three of them had a great weekend together, catching up with friends in the area. Sarah loved visiting her friend, but she felt a little helpless. There was only so much she could do, and she couldn't stay there all the time, as she had her own life to lead. When Sunday afternoon came, Sarah packed up her belongings and waved goodbye to Cynthia, Tom and their lovely house by the sea. Cynthia was sad to see her go, 
but thankful that her lovely friend came to visit her and made her house feel like a home. Now, let's go through some vocabulary from the story. We'll start with a couple of idioms. These are advanced idioms. The first one is to blow the cobwebs off, or sometimes people say to blow the cobwebs away. This means to get rid of feelings of tiredness, usually with fresh air or exercise. And sometimes if you are not feeling well or perhaps you are sad, then you can blow the cobwebs off or away to feel better. To take the plunge. To take the plunge is to make a decision to do something, especially after thinking about it for a long time. Now let's go through some of the vocabulary. We'll start with the more advanced words and then we'll move on the next slide to the intermediate words. Helpless. Helpless. If you are helpless, then you are unable to do anything to help yourself or anyone else. For example, babies are quite helpless. Intense. Intense. Intense means extreme and forceful or a feeling that is very strong. You could also say, oh, the flavours in this curry are very intense, meaning they're very strong. Isolated. Isolated. Isolated is to be not near other people or places. For example, the Isle of Skye in Scotland is isolated. Refreshed. Refreshed. If you are feeling refreshed, then you are less hot or tired. Thankful. Thankful. To be thankful is to be happy or grateful because of something or someone. Belongings. Belongings. These are the things that a person owns, especially those that can be carried on you. Heaven. Heaven. In the story, heaven is a situation that gives great pleasure. For example, you could go on holiday and say, I love this resort. It's pure heaven. Overlooking. Overlooking is to provide a view of, especially from above. For example, our hotel room is overlooking the beach or overlooks the beach. Pace. Pace. Pace is the speed at which someone or something moves or with which something happens or changes. Childhood. This is the time when someone is a child. Crash. To crash. To crash is to hit something, often making a loud noise or causing damage. For example, the waves crash upon the shore. Discover. To discover. To discover is to find information, a place or an object, especially for the first time. Exhausted. To be exhausted is to be very, very tired. Familiar. Familiar. If something is familiar, it is easy to recognise because of being seen, met or heard before. For example, you look really familiar. Did we used to work together? Floating. If something is floating, it is not fixed in one position, place or level. For example, in the story, the seagulls are floating through the air. Hidden. Hidden. If something is hidden, it is not easy to find. Regularly. This means often. Remind. To remind. To remind someone is to make them aware of something they have possibly forgotten or to bring back a memory of something or someone. 
For example, remind me to pick up my keys. I keep forgetting them. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story and the vocabulary explanations. Thank you for stopping by. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Get productive and check out our language learning productivity packs on Etsy. Use code YouTube10 for 10% off. You can find the link in the description box below. See you soon.